Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and just about a week ago, I dosed Reflux Fluconazole in my 210 gallon reef. The goal was to get rid of a little bit of bryopsis and hopefully help with the hair algae problem. So over the last week, a few things have happened. So we're gonna do a quick tank update to talk about some of that. And then we're gonna go downstairs. We're gonna do a little bit of work. We're gonna do a few little things, which I think are really gonna help with the algae issues and helping fluconazole get rid of that hair algae. It's early morning and the reef's just waking up. But this tank really has had a hard week. My furnace quit on me. I know, go figure. If you regularly follow this channel, you'll know I had air conditioning problems earlier in the year. Well, I think they ended up leading to some furnace problems. So I fixed that, but in the process, I went through a couple of cold nights and my tank spent some time at pretty low temperatures. I know I personally saw it as low as 71 degrees, but I'm not sure how long the temperature was real low and how low it got. But I'm seeing some minor effects in the tank, so we're going to start with those now. The coral that's been hurt the worst is my Atlantis pink tip, Monty Cap. And if you see the white, that's actually where the coral's dying off. It's in the shaded section, and when this coral dies off, this is how I've seen it happen before. The, sa the shaded section dies off, the part that's in the sun stays healthy. What I think is going on is the stuff in the shade is really weak and any sort of stressor kills it off. Now this has happened to this colony multiple times since I've owned it. So I'm not too worried about it. But it's interesting because I'm having the same problem upstairs and downstairs. So I think it's temperature related. Could be something else, but given how much the temperature changed, how fast it changed, how cold it got, I'm confident this is temperature related. I'm also seeing some recession on my purple worm brain. This coral has been notoriously difficult to keep ever since I got it. So while the recession doesn't look like much right now, this coral is notorious for stressing out and dying back. So hopefully this problem doesn't last too long. My Manipora slow burn is looking way better. If you remember from a few weeks ago, it was bleached out, it was white, it was looking terrible. And it's because of the sweeper tentacles from the frag of Cherry Garcia sitting up top. It used to be right down near the Monty, the sweepers could hit it, so I just moved it up. It's in the middle of a bunch of green pallies. Hopefully, we can actually use the damaging powers of that encrusting chalice to wipe out a bunch of those green pallies. No guarantees it's gonna work since those green pallies are right next to it and seem completely unfazed by the sweepers coming off that chalice. Otherwise, the 210's looking pretty good. Like I said, everything's not open yet, but that was really it from a big sustained temperature drop. I was pretty worried when it happened. Right now, it's looking pretty good. Downstairs, things are looking pretty good. This tank is, well, obviously I didn't get down here and scrape the glass. I've been working, dealing with furnace problems. I really hadn't been doing the tank work I'd like to do. The cool thing is, and I know it's gonna be hard to see, the stuff that looks like bryopsis is turning to mush, but the stuff that looks like hair algae is still pretty intact. It doesn't look healthy, but it's still there. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to take the coral out of the tank on the left, move them to the tank on the right. We're gonna clean the frag plugs. We're gonna suck the water out of this tank. We're gonna suck algae out of this tank. The goal is to manually remove as much algae as possible, weaken it as much as possible, and really give the fluconazole every possible chance. There's no guarantees it's getting rid of the hair algae, but since I dosed for the bryopsis and it's working on the bryopsis, Let's give the hair algae the best fighting chance as possible for us to kill it. And here's that blacked out tank without the lids on. It looks pretty good. We've got still the remnants of a little tiny bit of algae on the bottom. The goal is to get rid of as much as possible. 
The thing that's real surprising, and I don't think you guys can see it, is I look in back, there's little tiny Aptasia that have formed back there. So we're gonna attack those guys too. So the process is super simple. I really don't like this method because every time I move corals from one tank to the other, it stresses them out. But for now, I think it makes the most sense with what I've got going on. So the way this is gonna work is basically, I'm gonna pull every coral out of here. We'll start with this Atlantis pink tip for a reason. Basically, it goes into the bowl where I clean it, and then it'll go into this tank here, which is already clean. The reason I'm saying I'm starting with the Atlantis pink tip you may not be able to see it, but this is one that got that death on it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break off the dead section. So we still have a nice colony, but we're getting rid of the stuff that's recessing. This stuff, there's a little good on there that we could try to save, but really I've got crap loads of it, and this stuff is just gonna die and pollute my tank. And here's the tank with the cleaned coral in it. So clean tank, clean er coral. You can see there's still some stuff. Um, I hate this method I'm using right now because I have too much coral for the space I'm in. I can't get everything placed right for lighting, but the goal is to kill this algae. So since we got the conosol, we're gonna take this tank dark. But before I do that, let's scrape some algae and suck some out. <music> Just been scraping this tank, we're gonna let the algae settle to the bottom. So while we're waiting, let's kill those little Aptasia with Aptasia X. I find Aptasia X works just kinda okay. It will kill some anemones, not all. The ones I just attacked with the Aptasia X have been in the dark for weeks. They're tiny, so I think we got a good shot at beating them with Aptasia X. But I have had major outbreaks, tried to feed this to big ones, and not had a lot of luck. So hopefully this time it takes care of it. If it doesn't, we'll get an army of peppermint shrimp. One peppermint shrimp, doesn't usually do it. Normally, I need an army. I'm still waiting on this water to clear up. I'm a big fan of, in these situations, letting all the algae sink to the bottom so I can get as much of it out as possible. The goal is to suck as much algae out so we don't create a nutrient bloom later as it dies off. The 29 gallons suffered a bit of a setback. Since the furnace gave me problems, the tank temperature dropped pretty low, probably 74 degrees or so. The problem is, is my heater. Last time I had a heater over heat. So I bought the smallest possible heater for this tank and it runs constantly. But we are only at 78.1 degrees. The difference is, is right now I heat my house to about 68 degrees. In the summer, I heat it to more like 76 degrees. So in the summer, I could hit that 82, 83 degree temperature to keep those dino flagellates at bay. Right now, I can't. So temporarily, we're gonna throw another heater at this tank. For a replacement heater, I quite simply just stole the one out of my quarantine tank. You're probably like, but Scott, that was in copper. It's gonna kill all your fish. No, no it's not. I have rinsed it off in water. It doesn't absorb enough copper to do anything. I've got a, I can throw a bag of carbon in here if I'm really scared, but here's how scared I am. 
I'm not scared at all. It's gonna be fine. I've done this before. It's my fastest, easiest method to get this tank temp back up. So we're gonna raise it up over the next couple of days while I research a new heater for this tank. So what's your favorite heater? Put it down below. I'm looking for something size appropriate for this, something that will maintain a temperature. I set it at really well, but won't overheat. I know at this point I'm asking for the perfect fish that doesn't die. It doesn't exist. But let me know, what's your favorite heater? The other thing I've been noticing is my acanthophilia has been ble bleaching out a little bit, which I wouldn't have expected. He's in the corner on the bottom of the tank. I think he's getting too much light, so we're gonna put him in pretty low light. Acanthophilia really don't love that much light. I thought this was gonna be good enough. I've gone ahead and put the acanthophilia in the back of the tank. This is gonna be super low par levels. It's getting defused T5 lights, and that's about it. But where it was was pretty low light. So we're gonna put it here, see what it does. If it doesn't like it, we'll move it. In the process of moving that acanthophilia, I accidentally broke this hammer off. So I was kind of looking around for a better place to put him where he was he wasn't getting enough light to be happy and healthy. So I found this spot right here. It's an interesting place. He's close to a lot of coral. He could do some damage. But basically everything he's close to, I have extras of, so I'm not too worried about it. And it's just such a cool mounting position because as stuff starts to grow in, he really will just look like part of the reef, which is part of what I look for when you know choosing coral positions. Like what's the coral gonna do well with and is it gonna look cool? Now this is kind of an odd place because we're right in front of the gyre. Is this gonna be too much flow for this coral? Probably, but how will it adapt? What will it do? It's a science experiment. I have tons of this coral, why not? All right, I guess that's as much as that tank's gonna settle out. So let's start it. To start it, I just take a siphon right off of the pump down there. I've got the other end of the hose going to the drain hose. And now I can suck out. I've got about 15 gallons of water mixed up. So the goal is to pull 15 gallons of water out of here. And there we go, there's the midway treatment. I really don't know how this is gonna work out. But this is the process I'm taking. Everything kind of is where I'm expecting. We may or may not kill the hair algae. It's looking weak, it's looking bad, but it may or may not go. So I'm doing everything I can to up those chances. So in the interest of keeping it real, I've been trying to do this as more a vlog type video. I haven't done a lot of these because they're super hard to shoot. My camera gear is pretty expensive and doing this kind of work is hard for me. And today was no different. So when I was gluing that hammer coral on, I went ahead and accidentally glued the play button down on my camera. Yeah, I was quite literally had glue on my finger, had no idea. I didn't feel it, didn't notice it. I was, you know, working in the tank. I hit the play button to review the footage. Oh, and it was covered in glue. So now the back of my camera is covered in glue. I got the play button working, but it looks ugly. So until the next episode of Mile High Reefers, like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully on the next one, it's a full-on fluconosol update, or maybe we'll do eight years of Mile High Reefers. Who knows? Like, comment, and subscribe to find out.